Hi everyone. Welcome to our Let's Learn Futures webinar series brought to you by Bursa Malaysia Derivative and managed by LiveChamp. My name is Shane Chu. I'm the host for today's uh, webinar. I'm very excited to see all of you uh, this evening. So today our topic is on single stock futures 101. Okay, we have invited a very renowned speaker, Jin Hao, to come and share with us about this single stock futures topic. So as the name suggests, today uh, Jin Hao is going to introduce to you to this uh, fairly new futures contract called single stock futures. So stay tuned in this webinar to find out more about single stock futures. All right. Now, as usual, uh, disclaimer, whatever you share in this webinar is only for educational purpose. In no way that we give any buy or sell signal to any of the futures contract that we mentioned or any of the stocks case studies that we mentioned in this webinar. In the event that uh, you, you buy or sell long or short any contract, you do it at your own risk. Okay, so we are not uh, uh, financially responsible for all your financial decisions. Everything discussed here is only for case studies. Now, uh, Bursa Malaysia Derivative have actually uh, planned a series of uh, webinars for you in this year and uh, now we are actually on the seven or eight session so uh, next week we also have another webinar on uh, in the Malay and this until the end of the year just remember if you want to must master your under increase the understanding and master this futures uh, tool uh, please reserve your Thursday evening with uh, for us because every Thursday evening, almost every Thursday evening, we're going to talk about futures. Okay, so this is the whole series until December, 17 December uh, in 2020. Now, it gives me great honor to introduce our speaker to you today. Uh, he is a trader in the capital market. He is trading equities and futures, mainly in Malaysia, US, and Hong Kong markets. He is also the founder and chief master trainer of Street Finance. He has his own signature program called Street Trader Intensive Program. He regularly speaks for investment banks, universities, private entities, etc. And he's also featured in a media like uh, City Plus FM, Borneo Post. Okay. He also do regular Facebook Live. Okay. Without further ado, uh, let me hand over the session to you, Jin Hao. Are you ready? Yes, sure. Excellent. So I'm now making you the presenter. Okay. You may okay. uh, go Show ahead. Show my screen. Is it my screen right now? Yes, perfect. Okay, so we have like 200 over people in the room. Hi, everybody. Welcome, everybody. My name is Jin Hao and welcome to today's um, sessions. Okay, so and here's the content outline for uh, today's webinar. And this is an introductory webinar. Uh, specifically, we will be talking about SSF, which is the single stock futures. But I wouldn't uh, leave you hanging because I understand that a lot of you may or may not be familiar with uh, futures or futures market or futures contracts and things of that nature. So I will also be sharing with you okay, uh, things that you need to know in order to get started in uh, futures trading. So the first thing we will be talking about introduction to futures market and futures contracts and what's futures in general. And next, we will be talking about single stock futures, the introduction. And the next thing is, what are the benefits of trading single stock futures? Okay, what are the nice things about this uh, new product that uh, Busan Malaysia Derivatives okay, is introducing? So last but not least, very important, how to calculate your profit and loss. So without further ado, let's jump right into the meat okay of today's webinar so what are futures so if you don't know what's futures the most layman explanation that i can give you is this so for example if you are if i buy something from you okay i buy something from you for maybe this thing okay for 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 ten dollar okay for example for ten bucks and i'm i pay 10 bucks to you and then you give me the, the goods this is what we call i pay you now and it's like instantaneous delivery or, or i take delivery right now so maybe i can call it like this is 
present. Okay, this is what's happening right now. So what are futures? So futures, you can think it like, I want to buy something with you, but I want to pay you first, but I do not want to take delivery right now. I want to take a delivery in a future that maybe next month. Okay, in what situation? Okay, in what situation you might want to do that? Okay, so in what situation you might want to do that? For example, I am an airline company. Okay, you, we all know that uh, the oil price. Okay, is one of the threat of the, the most important uh, thing when it comes to uh, running and transportation business or aviation business. Now, for example, I think that. I think that the price of oil will go up in the next few months. So I want to approach you and say, hey, you sell oil, okay? And I want to buy oil from you right now because for me, right now, I know that it, is, it may be cheap and it will be more expensive for the next few months. So I tell you, I want to buy oil from you, but the problem is, I want to pay you the price right now. I want to pay you right now, but I want to lock in the price right now. I do not want to take the delivery right now. I want to take the delivery after three months, for instance. Okay, so this is what we call future. So both of us, the buyer and seller, okay, will enter into a contract. And that contract is what we call futures. Okay, so this is perhaps the most layman explanation I can give it to you. But of course, this is just uh, the, the logic or the basic fundamental of future. So when you are trading in a market, uh, you don't have to complicate yourself with this, but let me share with you, how can you calculate and all those things, okay? But just to give you an idea what futures uh, actually is. So a futures market, okay, is, where participants can buy and sell futures contracts. So think like a supermarket of uh, futures contract. It is just like the stock market. Okay, you go to the stock market. It is it is a supermarket of stocks. So you can buy you can buy a top glove. You can buy your Dufu. You can buy your Penta. You can you can buy your Maybank Gunting. Okay, so it's like a supermarket of stocks. So futures market is a supermarket of futures whereby you can buy and sell futures contract. Okay, and what is a futures contract? A futures contract is a standardized legal agreement, okay, to buy or sell an underlying asset. It could be commodities, it could be indices, it could be a lot other things like interest rate. It is also uh, uh, one of the futures, okay, tradable things, okay, at a predetermined price, okay. At a specified time in the futures okay so this is what we call a contract basically it's a contract it's a terms and like i'm going to pay you this amount and then you're going to take delivery after how many months for example okay so this is what we call futures contract now i want to explain what is it called a standardized legal agreement so why is futures okay so important in the market right now and why is it we need like a futures market which is regulated okay why is it very important it is because of this standardized legal agreements so to give you an example let me just share with you two uh products that you might have already known in the malaysia stock market uh, futures market so this is the fkli the underlying okay this is what we call a standardized legal agreement whereby it is like a contract specification what's the detail so that everyone in the market is trading the exact same contract so it is easier to regulate it's easier to 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 get things done okay you you wouldn't be happening like oh i want to enter in the futures contract of maybe only 10 barrels of oil but the sellers want to enter 50 barrels of oil so it's like this is not a standardized agreement it is a customized agreement Okay, so standardized legal agreement, you have a contract specification. So whatever futures product you trade, you have to make sure you read the contract specification because those are standardized. Okay, so let me just share with you what are the contract specification for uh, two products that you might have already known. 
that is listed in the uh, Malaysia futures market. Okay, so our first one is FKLI, whereby the underlying, okay, and underlying is our FBM KLCI index. Okay, so which means the price, okay, of FKLI futures contract is determined or co very closely correlated to the underlying. In this case, it is our FBM KLCI. And what's the contract size? The contract size will be the KLCI times 50 bucks, okay, 50 ringgit per point. So for example, if the KLCI right now is like 1,005, then 1,005 points times 50 ringgit, that would be the actual con contract size, okay? So what's the price fluctuation? This price fluctuation, okay, is the minimum fluct fluctuation. How many tick is that? So in FKLI, is 0 0.5 index point in this case. So meaning that it is unlike stocks or unlike, sorry, uh, unlike our KLCI, you can see index like 1523.18. It is possible to see this number, but for price fluctuation in FKLI is different. It can only be 1523.0 or 1523.5. So it move in a multiple of 0.5 index point okay so because okay if you can see my cursor because the contract size is the fbm klci in points times 50 ringgit so it means that one point is worth 50 ringgit so it means that the per tick value is 25 ringgit because per tick is half index point so there we go simple math okay it might sound a little bit uh complicated but just put it in the most simpler term. When FKLI move up half point, if you are going long, means you buy FKLI contract by going long, for every half index point you move up, you will be up by 25 ringgit for each contract, okay? And vice versa. So trading hours for FKLI is 8.45 in the morning until 12.45 in the afternoon. And then we will continue at 2.30 okay, p.m. And it closed at 5.15 uh, p.m. Okay, so it's slightly longer than our regular stock market. Okay? And the settlement is cash settlement. It means that if you hold the contract until it expires. Okay? So next is FCPO. So FCPO is a very popular product, okay? futures product in Malaysia. Is The underlying is the crude palm oil okay so crude palm oil recently has been really hot as well because it is up trending okay so the contract size is 25 metric tons so fkli is an index futures so fcpo is actually a commodity futures whereby it's actual commodity inside and there's a lot of uh, people who are trying to hatch the risk uh, of the fluctuation fluctuating uh, crude palm oil prices with the futures um, uh, co contracts okay so each contract represents 25 metric tons this is what we call standardized legal agreement okay so everything is when you trade is exactly the same according to the contract specification so depending on maybe the company how many metric tons they want to hedge against the risk they will uh, long or short and hedge again the risk accordingly okay and the price fluctuation is one ringgit per metric ton per tick value, 25 ringgit, which means, for example, if you buy FCPO and the price is, for example, 2700, and when it goes to 2701, you are up by 25 ringgit. Okay, that's simple. So one tick, 25. Okay, there is no decimals in FCPO. And trading hours is 10.30 in the morning until 12.30 and 2.30 in the afternoon until 6. And settlement is physical delivery, okay? So that's why I don't hold your FCPO until uh, expiry, okay? So usually we don't trade the expiry month as well, okay, for FCPO because it is a um, commodity futures. So this is what we call standardized legal agreement. So whatever futures you want to trade next time, 
make sure you read their contract specification. So this is not the most comprehensive uh, contract specification. I just uh, pick the most important information. There are, there are a few more contract specific details in the contract specification. It is usually like information that uh, about one Air Force size worth of information. Okay, It is not very complicated. It states whatever information information that you need to know if you want to trade that futures uh, contracts okay so and this information you can always find it in busan malaysia website so to find it in busan malaysia website you just go to busanmalaysia.com at the navigation bar you click trade and then you click derivatives so you will see a whole list of uh, busan malaysia uh, there are futures product and derivatives products okay so that's how you can find all the information about the contract specification for example maybe you want you want to trade the other futures okay so the first thing is go and dig out the contract specification so that you understand what you are trading what's the trading hour what's the per tick value and things of that nature okay so everything can be found in busan malaysia's website all right okay so this is um example okay just a screenshot of the futures market and the futures contract so different platform will look uh very differently okay so this is just one of the uh platforms okay just to show you that uh how how it is looking like okay so you can see that this is uh, fkli which is the product and you can see that there is a FKI continuous contract. So continuous contract is not a contract that you can trade, okay? Because futures, you have like different contracts. You can see that in this screenshot, you can see that there is an August 2020 contract. You can see that it's a September 2020 contract, October, December 2020, and March 2021. So continuous contract is just for charting purposes, okay? Most of the time, whereby we want, okay, the chart to reflect the most active month in front okay so that's just the concept of continuous contract but when we want to trade for example right now it is september okay it's september already so you won't see august 2020 contract when you log into your futures trading platform you wouldn't see uh, august 2020 the first one you will see is september 2020 so for index okay we usually trade the spot month which is the current month september 2020 okay so until the last day of uh, the month, you will still be trading that contract until the next month. So you will close the position by month end, okay? If if you could, okay? So this one, okay, would be how it uh, looks like. So for example, you want to trade September, you want to trade October, you want to trade December, you can trade that, but usually from a trader's perspective okay, from a trader's perspective we usually trade the most active month or the spot in this case is the spot month okay so that's from the perspective of uh, traders because from for perspective of uh, hedgers that would be totally different okay so this is just an example okay of uh, futures market and the contract so you have multiple products in the market and for each product, like in this case is FKLI, you can see that there are a lot of different contracts. Okay, so if you see FCPO, there will be even more contracts. Okay, now these are the examples of futures trading uh, platform offered by different uh, brokers. So these three you can see that okay is from mobile. So one thing about futures trading is most of the um, uh, desktop or software or web-based uh, platform for me is it looks a little bit dated okay so it's very complicated okay i don't want to uh, uh, make everything complicated for you guys okay because this is just an introductory uh, webinar but just to show you that it is more or less if not the same okay more or less the same like the stock trading uh, platform that you are used to so for example this one you have the product name okay, you have the product name 
and then you have the price like today up how many points or in percentage how much what's the opening price what is the previous closing price what's the volume for today what is the day high day low and you have the usual cues okay it works just like the stock trading uh, platform the only thing you might find it like slightly different is the type of orders that you can key in so this is what i like about um futures trading one of the neat things that i like about futures trading is the kind of orders type that you have okay with most brokers okay so you have buy and sell you have a quantity one means one contract two means two contracts so you have to trade in a multiple of one you cannot trade 1.5 contracts okay as far as i know in malaysia you cannot okay so the price what price you want to uh long or short now for those who don't know what is long or short just a crash cost long means buy meaning that you buy low and sell high okay that's what we call going long in the contract so if we think that the price will go up we go long if we think that the price will go down we go short it means that we sell at a higher price first and later buy back at a lower price so this is how it basically means okay so this is a price that you want to either go long or short okay means buy or sell so if you want to go long you buy to open the position and you sell to close the position so if you want to go short you sell to open the position and later on you have to buy back to close the position okay so that's the price and a few different things okay you have like validity valid today means uh it will be valid until the market close later or you have like the, your usual like gtc good queue cancel uh order validity okay so the next thing is maybe you can see there's some kind of like trigger price and you can choose between a like limit order or market order things like that so later i'll expand when it comes to the third screenshot so second screenshot is just another product that is offered okay another platform that you can find okay the different platform looks slightly different but more or less the same you get the um what we call okay you you get the similar features or if not the same okay so the first one i let you see the crude palm oil okay so you can see that the buy and sell okay the bid and ask price is always in multiple of one point because just now we talk about okay the price fluctuation so for fcp oil is one ringgit per metric ton so for fki is half index point so when it comes to this one you see you 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 get the price in multiple of one ringgit so you can see that so and when it comes to fkli this one you can see that the bid is one five one five five two point five and the ask is half point away okay so you can see that um all the information is still the same okay you have your contracts okay which which is the product you are trading and the contracts and you have the day low you have the day high you have the volume you have the last done price okay and then this is a lot more and the quantity the the order type uh, limit price okay and things of that nature but i want to touch more about this one okay i want to touch more about this one okay what is this okay there are a lot of order type you can do in uh in most futures trading uh, platform okay there are a lot of things that you can do in most uh, in most uh future trading platform in malaysia so um the most common one that you might be already familiar is what we call limit order okay it's what i call limit order so limit order think like uh, that is the default order that you when, when, when we buy stocks in Malaysia. So what is limit order? I always want to think like limit order is a cheap stake order. I want to be cheap. So what does it mean? Meaning that right now, if the market is trading at 1552.5 at a bit and 1553 at the ask, I want to buy cheaper. I don't want to use 1553 to buy. I want to buy with 1552.5 or lower. So I, I want to buy cheaper. So that's what we call cheapskate. Okay. So I think limit order like a cheapskate order. Okay. So it's either I want to buy with a cheaper price or I want to sell with a more expensive price. Okay. I just want to squeeze everything out of it. Okay. So 
That is what I call it limit order, meaning that when you key in a limit order, you have to queue behind those people who are in front, okay, at the price. Okay, so for example, if you look at here, if you key in 2680, okay, as a limit order, limit buy order, you are going to queue behind these 14 contracts. Okay, this is the order type that you might be very familiar with with it already. Okay, this it happens in our stock market, okay, the stock trading platform that we are using is limit order. So what is market order? Market order is what we call buy on board. Okay, if you are very familiar with this term, buy on board, meaning that market order, when you key in market order, the order has a guarantee execution. Okay, has a guarantee execution, but what's not guaranteed is the price. Okay, meaning that it will, the system will buy at whatever price it is. Okay. I just want to buy. I want to get that things done. Okay. So in this case, if you key in a market order, it is very likely for your for your buy order to match at 1553 or even higher. Okay. So whatever is the best ask price when you key in the order, that would be the price that it will match. If market moves very fast, you will see that you could be ending up buying or selling at a higher even low or lower price okay so guarantee execution but price is not guaranteed okay so next thing is what we call stop order okay what is stop order stop order means for example right now the price for fkr is 1552.5 and the ask price is 1553 now maybe you have some strategy maybe you have a rebound strategy or the breakout strategy so let's have breakout Okay, for example, the resistance is 1580. Okay, so you tell yourself, I only want to go long if it breaks out from 1580. Okay, so you can enter a stop order with a stop price above 1580. Okay, it could be 1581. So, meaning that your order will remain dormant. It means it will be sleeping until the price is traded at 1581. That's when the stop price is being triggered. And then your order will be converted into a market order. Okay, this is what we call stop order. You, it is like a, a conditional order, meaning that if the trigger price, the stop price is not hit, your order will remain dormant. Okay, so with stop order, your stop price, okay, your order will become a market order once the stop price is being hit. So what about stop limit order? Stop limit order means your order, okay, will become a limit order once the stop price is hit. Okay, so with the first one, sometimes you, when you see, look at the platform is something like this, you have a trigger price. Then you can change the price limit to maybe either price limit or market order. Okay, so that's just different platforms. They use different language, but I'm here to tell you that you have way more flexibilities and options when it comes to trading futures compared to stocks. Okay, so that also means that if you can key in limit order and stop order, you can also key in a stop loss and a target profit order. So it's very convenient if you're in the future, if you want to learn all these things, okay, you can always ask uh, your broker to explain to you because they are very familiar with stop how to set a stop loss and target profit, okay, when it comes to futures trading. Okay, it's unlike stocks. Okay, stock stocks you still have to like most of the time you have to key in okay the the alert price at your apps like KLIC screener and things like that, and sometimes there's a delay you have to monitor and all those. Okay, so. These are how okay, advanced the order is with the futures uh, market. Okay, so today we are here to talk about SSF, which is single stock futures. So in this chart, you can see that these are the derivatives offered by Busan Malaysia derivative. Okay, so 
I hope that by now you should have an idea what is uh, futures and what are some of the good things about futures. Okay. And for the second half of the session, let me share with you this brand new product. Okay, by Busan Malaysia. It's a new initiative that Busan Malaysia uh, come up with, and let's talk more about it for another half hour. So these are the uh, derivatives we have in Malaysia. You have commodity derivative, you have gold futures, CPO. Okay, you have uh, RBD palm oil in. Okay, you have like crude palm kernel and 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 a lot thing, a lot of things. And you have like KLCI, FKI futures. Okay, KLCI options. Okay, and you have like FM70, and then now we have single stock futures. And for financial derivatives, it's all about uh, the trading the interest rate. Okay, so today let's focus in single stock futures. So what are SSFs or single stock futures? So single stock futures are futures on selected individual stocks listed on Busa Malaysia. Just now we talk about like crude palm oil futures. So that is a futures on crude palm oil. So what are single stock futures? Single stock futures are futures on selected individual stocks. Okay. So single stock futures have a standard contract specification. Again, because it is a futures, it must have a standardized contract specification. Okay. And they are exchange traded. Okay. Like just what I show you, it is listed in the futures market, the supermarket of futures. Okay. So, and each single stock futures is equivalent to 1,000 shares of the underlying asset. Meaning that, for example, if you go long, one uh, single stock futures of Hatta, okay, meaning that Hatta Lega single stock futures, it means that you are holding a long positions, okay, equivalent uh, of 1,000 shares of Hatta Lega, okay, one whole lot, okay. So, this is the uh, underlying asset. Okay, so the underlying asset of each contract is one thousand shares of the respective shares, respective counters. Okay, so this is what we call SSF, and SSF expire on the last business day of the contract months, and they are cash settled, just like our FKLI. Okay, so here's the contract specification. So the first thing is you have the code. What is the code? The code start with F, and then you have like three more alphabet that represents the um the, the the stock okay so so for example later i'll give you the whole list okay no worries so the underlying instrument is the single stock the selected stocks the contract size is 1000 unit of that single stocks okay and the minimum price fluctuation is 0 0.02 point okay and for the per tick value is 20 bucks Okay, 20 ringgit. So what are the contract months available? Meaning that when you open single stock futures, okay, the list, like just now I show you with the example of futures market and, and contracts, okay, what are the available contract months? So first thing you have the spot month. Spot month means the current month. And then you have the next month, okay? And then you have the next two calendar month, calendar quarterly month. So the calendar quarterly months, will be March, June, September, and December. So right now, if you open into any single stock futures, you will have spot month, which is September, and then you will have October, which is the next month, and then you have two more contracts, which is the quarterly months, and in this case will be December 2020 and March 2021. So you have four contracts, four options to trade for each single stock futures, okay, for each product. Okay, so the trading hours is exactly the same as our FKLI. The morning session starts at 8.45, which is 15 minutes earlier than our, our standard stock market opens, and it closed 15 minutes later than the stock market, and it opens at 2.30 p.m. and closed at 5.15 p.m., exactly like the FKLI. So the final trading day is the last business day of the contract month, and it is it is cash settled. Okay. So the final settlement value will be weighted average price. Okay. This, this one, all, all those things, okay, you can uh, find it in uh, the contract specification, okay, in Busa websites. Okay. So this is just uh, 
the stocks that are available for trading okay you can see that it's a little bit complicated you sometimes can see like crude pump oil and suddenly drb high com again because this is the whole list that you might be seeing in your trading platform depending on which one you are using this one is just an example so i have listed down the stocks that are available for trading so we have cimb drb gamuda Genting, Genting Malaysia, Hatta, Inari, MyEG, Telecom, and Top Glove. Okay, and these are the respective codes. Okay, just like a stock codes. Okay, but futures, we also have codes. Okay, and this is the latest initial margin. What does initial margin mean? It means that, for example, I want to go, I want to establish a position in this single stock futures. Each contract, for example, I might want to go short on Genting, which is F G E N. So I need to maintain 350 ringgit for every contract, for every open position, okay, that I have. Okay, so if I short two contracts, then I will need to maintain a 700 ringgit of margin. Okay, so it means that I need more than that in my account, or else if I have a little bit of loss, I will get margin call. Okay, so these are the initial margin list you can always find it in a busa malaysia website because this initial margin it always change okay when i first look at ssf hatta lega and top glove the initial margin is not thousand and thousand two okay it is like three four hundred only because uh on april okay if i'm not mistaken it's april this product is being launched by busa malaysia hatta and top glove share price is not that high yet okay so it changes from time to time, okay? Even for the other futures as well, like FKLI and FCPO. So it changes from time to time. You might want to get update from Busan Malaysia website or even from uh, your broker or Remiser, okay? So let's talk about what are the benefits, okay? What are the neat things of trading single stock futures? So if you are familiar with futures, you might be already uh, familiar that a lot of people are in futures, okay, because of the leverage and because the ability of go long and go short, okay. So I'll just go through once what are the benefits of trading SSF, okay. And again, remember that this is a fairly new product that Busa Malaysia introduces, okay. So it's good to know that the product is here, okay, for us to, to trade in the future, okay. So now, the first benefit is we can profit from both directions. So, for example, you can see that Top Glove, in four months' time, Top Glove went up by 19.35, uh, 19 ringgit and 35 cents, which is about 300% gain. So, meaning that if you buy 1,000 shares of Top Glove, you would earn about 19,000 ringgit. Okay? And that is what you can do with single stock futures, okay? Because every contract you go long, you are actually going long, okay? You're actually buying 1,000 shares, the underlying, okay? So meaning that that's what you are going to earn, okay? With this single stock futures as well. Later, I will go into the calculations. So this is just to let you know that what are the benefits, okay, of these products. Next is what? Uh, what we call shorting, okay, going short. So you can see that stocks go up, but they go down as well. So glove stocks, I think Hatta Lega is the first stock that is perhaps one of the weakest right now, okay? So you might have your own opinion, but just to let you know that um, maybe stocks like Genting, Okay, it's very obvious in this case, whereby in one year time, Genting dropped by three ringgit, about three ringgit or down by 44%. So meaning that three ringgit of fluctuation times a thousand shares, it means like 3,000 uh, ringgit of profit, possible profit if you go short. But here's a problem. We cannot go short in Malaysia market. Okay, we cannot short the stocks per se. Yes, we have the intraday, short selling but how much can you make intraday okay and this the, the volume and fluctuation is not that consistent so intraday there's no big movement okay 
And what we call big movement is like what, what I show you just now, top glove, big movement. Genting, downtrending stocks, big movement. So these are big movements. So to, to profit from big downward movement, you must be able to short the share, okay, short the counter and hold it for a period of time. Could be a few weeks or few months, okay? But IDSS does not allow us to hold overnight. So in Malaysia, we still cannot short sell shares like other countries but right now busa has introduced this single stock futures which opens up an alternative for those people who are bearish with selected stocks that 10 stocks just now okay so this is one of the benefit and this the i think it's the um one of the main reasons why people are in uh, in the futures trading futures okay when klci is down okay they want to go short okay something like that okay so second is low capital because of the nature of leverage okay so for example if you were to trade 1000 shares of inari okay and for example if inari is trading at two ringgit 20 cents right now per shares and to trade 1000 shares of inari you would need 2000 ringgit and 200 2200 ringgit to trade 1000 shares and the capital required to trade one contract of inari futures okay is just the initial margin which is 200 ringgit so it is about okay about 5 to 10 percent okay about like 5 to 10 percent of the total value okay the the contract value about five to ten percent okay so again for the required margin updated list refer to busa's website okay and then uh also you can get it from your broker as well okay so third one benefit okay law transaction cost and i think that this is also uh, something that you might want to consider. Okay, the cost of trading 1,000 units of Hatta Lega stocks. For example, if I I know that Hatta has already dropped, so let's let's example it is um 16 ringgit per share times 1,000, and most of us might be paying like 0.1 percent if you are using a cash upfront account. That would be 16 ringgit of brokerage fee, exclude SST, okay, per side, and that's like in and out 32 okay so the cost of trading one contract of sorry this should be hatta okay one contract of fhar okay this typo there is about okay about 10 ringgit per site okay so it is i wouldn't say it's a day and night difference okay but it's lower okay uh it could be lower may not be most of the stocks but especially on high price stocks like top glove and hatta lega you might okay you might see that uh, trading the futures will have a lower transaction cost. Okay, so benefits number four is uh, quite subjective, depends on what you do in the market. Okay, so for you can use futures, okay, for speculation purpose. So you might think that the, the some of the stocks will be bearish for the next few months. Okay, you might want to speculate this movement. And another, Okay, like you think certain stocks will go up and down substantially in share price, you would like to take advantage to profit from that possible move. For example, you think that for some reason, um, top growth will go down substantially in the next few months, okay? Or you might think that Gunting has a chance to go up for the next few months, okay? Then there's something that you can take advantage on. This is what I call speculation, okay? N number two is hedging. For example, you, if you're a long-term investor of the company, Okay, for example, you are a long-term investor of Hatta Lega because you, you think that the company is good. But right now, because the share price has come down quite substantially, okay, from like the high of 20 to right now 13. For example, if the company you think that you think that the company in short to midterm, the stock price might suffer some price correction. Okay, you you might want to hedge again this risk. Meaning that you don't sell away your stocks, but you hedge again this downward movement with futures. Okay, this is a very common strategy that a lot of uh, people use to hedge against the portfolio with uh, index futures and things like that. Okay, so this is what I call hedging, and depends on where you where, which angle you come from. Okay, 
futures might play a different role in, in, in your trading uh, journey or in managing your portfolio. Okay, so let's continue, which is the last part of this uh, presentation. Okay, so how to calculate profit and loss. And at first, you might think that it can be complicated, but trust me, it is easier than, than what you think because I find it very easy as well compared to other uh, futures product. Okay, so how to calculate profit and loss. Trading in a bullish trend. Now, for example, you think that Inari share price is likely to go up, okay, in the near future. Right now, Inari is trading at 220 and you want to go long on Inari. So the contract value is 2 ringgit 20 cents times 1,000 shares because that's one contract is worth 1,000 shares. So contract value, 2,002. So the initial required margin is 200 ringgit. So meaning that you need a minimum of 200 ringgit to open this trade. Okay, plus bro crash la, okay. So after two weeks, Inari share price went up by went up to 250 and you sold to close your position, for example. So meaning that the contract value when you sell the contract, you close the position is 250 times 1000, then it will be at 2005. So the profit is 2005 minus 2000, so 2002. So in this case, the profit is 300 ringgit, okay. So the ROI is the profit you get divided by the initial margin because this is the only, you don't need 2,000 plus ringgit to trade one contract of Inari futures. You only need at least 200 ringgit plus brokerage. Okay, so 300 is your profit and 200 is your initial margin. So the ROI is about 150% gross. Okay, so if you were to buy the actual shares, the shares is gonna buy only like 10 over percent, okay? So it's, there's a difference there definitely, okay? So this is how you can, you, you calculate the trend. You just, assume, you just assume that you are in the stock and you have 1,000 shares, okay? That's the simplest way to, to, to see things, okay? So that would be how, okay? The PNL is calculated, and of course, because the initial margin is the required cost, okay, at your site to trade the future. So that's why when it comes to ROI calculation, it will always be higher because, again, futures is by default, okay, a leverage product. Okay, so how about bearish trend? Okay, it's, it's the same. For example, if you think that Gunting share price is likely to go down in the near futures, right now it's trading at, for example, three ringgit ninety cent, and you short one contract of Gunting SSF. Okay. Again, the contract value is three thousand nine. Okay, this one is very uh, easy. Initial margin for Gunting three hundred fifty. Okay, so after two weeks, Gunting share price went down because you are bearish with the stock. Okay, so it went down to 350 and you bought to close position. So remember, when you're going short, you sell to open the position. And for that short position, you have to buy, you have to buy back to close your position. Okay, so there is no borrowing of shares uh, involved. So if you're familiar with the classic short selling, Okay, for example, you want to short sell Amazon shares, Tesla shares, you have to borrow shares in order to go short. So you go short, then you sell away the share. After that, when you want to close your position, you have to buy back the shares and then pay back, give it back to whoever lend the shares to you. So again, when you are shorting single stock futures, there is no borrowing of shares involved. Okay. So it's very straightforward. So you buy back to close the position. So contract value is 350 times 1000. So it's 3005. Again, profit is 3009 minus 3005 and your profit is 400 bucks. So your ROI in this case is 400 ringgit divided by 350, which is the initial margin. Again, for initial margin, always check the latest one. Okay, they changes like every other days. No, it's not every other days, but 
when there's a big movement in the underlying, in the underlying, then most probably the margin will be updated. Okay. So ROI in this case, 114%. So it's very simple, very straightforward. Okay. So that would be uh, all, okay, for these uh, sessions. Okay. And I think that one thing that you guys might be asking is uh, how about when you buy into the, you're in position of the SSF, okay, SSF. Uh, what if like top glove, okay, it has a bonus issue or share split. So when bonus issue and share split, okay, the price would be adjusted. Okay, the price would be adjusted and then the contract specification will always maintain at 1,000 shares. Okay, this is from the FAQ of the SSF uh, product and dividend will be ignored unless it is a special dividend. So this, I would say that it is a, a special case, special scenario. So when that happens, you might want to check it, the exact calculation, okay, with your broker. Okay, so just to let you know that because it is a futures, the contract specification must be maintained. One contract is 1,000 shares. So there is definitely going to be some kind of adjustment, okay? So from what I know, dividend is will be ignored, okay? There is no adjustment made for dividend unless for special scenario as a case-to-case -case basis. But from the information given by BUSA, special dividend might be considered to have some adjustment. The rest will be most probably uh, ignored. Okay, so that would be all for uh, these uh, single stock futures. So, Shen, are you there? Yes, definitely here for you. All right, so we are okay. now ready for question and answer session. Thank you, Jin Hao, for your wonderful uh, sharing on single stock futures. So, okay. if you have any questions to ask in relation to the uh, sharing today or presentation today, please type in the Q&A box so that uh, we'll be able to address that. And remember, write your questions in full sentences so that we'll be able to understand uh, what you are asking about. Okay. So, uh, Jin Hao, the first question is, uh, could you explain how SSF dif is different from CFD? Okay, so this is a very interesting question. Okay, so SSF is a futures. So you are regulated, sort of like regulated by the futures exchange and things, things like that. So you have the leverage, okay, you have the leverage. And I would say that, okay, if the person asks about SSF versus CFD, I will just put it in this way. I, I assume that you understand what is CFD. I'll just show you the main difference. First, SSF, you are bound with trading the futures contract. It means that one contract, a thousand shares. That, that's the, the standard contract specific, specification. And CFD, you can trade in different uh, units. So you can trade like 1,005, 1,008, 2,005. So this is the first flexibility you have. Second is actually um expiry because futures we deal with expiry and cfd they don't have expiry what they do is for the period of time you're holding the the, the cfd stock cfd or whatever cfd they will charge you an interest and that's it so you are not bound by uh expiry but you have to bear the interest for the period of time you are holding so both products will give you leverage okay so the difference is only the flexibility in units you want to buy, and the second is of course expiry. And right now for Malaysia, from what I know, if you want to trade Malaysia shares CFD, you need to be a sophisticated investor. <laughs> okay. All right. So that would hopefully answers your, your questions. Yeah, sophisticated investor means that you need to have at least three million worth of net worth uh, to be able to yeah. trade CFD. I think currently we only have uh, two brokers that offer CFD. Uh. Mm. Okay. But single stock futures, there are many brokers that can offer. Uh, I think I have seen that there are many questions to ask which broker, what platform. Okay. You can uh, off 
should be all futures broker will have uh, will have the availability to let you trade SSF. Uh, so how to find all these futures, licensed futures broker, you can go to Bursa Marketplace to find who are these uh, licensed futures broker, or you can go to a Bursa Malaysia website to find. Am, am I right, uh, Jin Hao? Yes, and from what I understand is, uh, there might, let's say some brokers, they might not include in uh, in the, the list of products you might want to contact your broker to ask them to like open it for you, meaning that let you see. But by default, I know that a lot of platforms are actually letting you to see the list of uh, SSF already. Okay, there are also uh, a few questions that are asking about liquidity of SSF. Could you comment about that? Okay, because this is a fairly new product, okay, that uh, Busan Malaysia is introducing. So liquidity is definitely uh not as good yet okay compared to other product okay just like when last time busa launched like new products liquidity is always something that concern so again this is a uh, single stock futures and introductory at least we know that there is an options okay there's alternative for us in the market if we want to go long or go short in certain shares that busa is offer so in the future in the future okay busa might okay introduce more okay more uh stocks for under ssf or they will have like more market maker to participate uh in this uh, single stock future so right now if you want like really want to trade ssf the only comment i can give you is try not to trade the spot month give yourself a little bit more longer time frame so that your contract don't expire too fast okay so that would be the the thing that uh, I can comment. So right now, again, this is an introductory, uh, like for SSF, it's fairly new product yet. And uh, on the later part, okay, Busa will probably do something to create more liquidity on it. Mm, okay. So there's another question they're asking, is it is SSF Shara compliant? Depends on the mother share. So if the mother share is share compliant, then the pro, uh, then the SSF is share compliant. So if you invest in uh, if if, if the underlying is uh, Gunting, then obviously it is not share compliant. If the underlying is Top Glove Hatta, then obviously they are share compliant. Yep, yep. Okay, so that answer the questions. So the next question is uh, what is the difference between SSF and option? Okay, in Malaysia, in Malaysia, there is no options. So I don't think that you can like compare like, because there's like no Hatalega options yet in Malaysia. So um, again, if you want me to compare, it's like futures versus uh, options. Okay, so if from a trading perspective, okay, both of them have the similar features okay has similar features it's like you get get the leverage okay and then you have like specification as well like option one option in us is 100 shares things like that so more more or less the same but uh the only thing is we don't have options like in malaysia for the shares okay so i'm not sure why how should i answer this question but from a trading perspective, both of them have uh, leverage and it's like relatively like cheap to trade, things like that. Okay. I think that is the that is the thing that I can share. Okay. Because I cannot compare because there is no uh, options for, okay, for, for our like Hatta, Top Glove, CRMB, but we do have warrants. So if you want to ask what, is the different what are the differences between our warrants and uh, SSF is the flexibility okay the flexibility you have when it comes to how much you want to buy okay the flexibility you you can buy like 1500 units of Hatalega warren is up to you as long as it is in the multiple of a hundred units because warrants they're complying with like the stock market 
trading regulatory. So that's the thing. And when it comes to leverage, it's kind of like they are derivatives, okay? They track their mother shares movement, but how much the warrants worth, for example, the warrants might worth like 40 cents per share. So if you are going long, okay, you buy the warrants for like maybe, I don't know, okay, 1,000 units, you need exactly that amount of holding power. You don't get additional leverage anymore. The only leverage is the movement is amplified. Okay, the movement is amplified. So the the concept behind is slightly different. So for warrants and options, is the movement is being amplified. Okay, for futures, is that it requires less to trade the exact value. Okay, it's, we deal with like things like initial margin. Okay, so that is the main difference. And again, it's more or less the same. The only differences is first is flexibility or how much you want to buy. Um, second is one is amplified movement, okay. Uh, one is uh, we deal with initial margin, okay. Okay. Uh, the next question is by uh, Zilim. What is the difference between shorting, uh, shorting uh, security using SSF and also IDSS? IDSS, you have to cover back the position, meaning that you have to close the position by the end of that same day okay so there's only one one what you must short and cover back in one day so one day how much movement can a stock have okay 10 percent okay but again sometimes you know that market can be very choppy can be very uh, volatile in a single day so ssf i wouldn't i, I will not say that ssf is a tool for day trading at least for now it's not because we we still have the not enough like participants okay so it is more towards like if you want you anticipate that a share will drop in price for the next one or two months you cannot use idss to short the share and hold until one or two months you must cover back during uh, towards the end of the day so with ssf you can choose the contract months accordingly. Okay, so how much do you think that, or when, how long does it will it take to to go down? So you can you have different options. You have current month, next month, and two quarterly months. So that's the main difference. IDSS, if let's say I shot Gunting, okay, but if Gunting did not drop today, I have to buy it back. So there's a loss. But if you are shorting the SSF, because it is a futures, so you can hold until before the expiry. So you have longer time, okay, longer time. So maybe it does not drop today, but it dropped next month, okay? So if your contract hasn't expired, you will still be in the movement, okay? So that's the, the, the main difference. Just like people ask me, contra versus like buy and hold a stock, like an investors okay so it's like time period is different all right so yeah idss is intraday only okay uh thank you for the explanation and comparing between idss and uh, shorting the market using ssf so uh next question is uh, how is there any market makers uh, for this ssf that you know of Actually, from my experience, there is not enough market maker. So actually, I have asked before, like, is there any market maker? Okay, the answer I get is yes, but I think that there's not enough. Okay, there's not enough. All right. Mm, okay. At least for now, at Still. least for now. Okay. Uh, so Busa is uh, like introducing this, so they are trying to push it. So uh, in the future, uh, I believe that, okay, we all believe that like Busa, uh, might do more things on it, okay, because it's still fresh, okay. So, yeah, in the futures, that might be different, okay, but right now, just keep an eye on it. Yeah, today is more on academy session, so hopefully, you know, we will have uh, more liquidity coming, okay, God yes. willing. Yes, next is, uh, can we do spread trading on SSF? How about the spread trading margin? Okay, 
yes, there is a spread trading options for SSF and for the margin, it is again, you have to refer back to because um, this is an introductory course. So I did not want, I, I didn't put spread trading inside, but yes, spread trading is doable and you can find all the required margin, the details in uh, the, the Busan Malaysia website. Mm. They always have the like kind of like the circular, okay, that updates like every single product's details, whether or not they change the contract specification or they change the required margin. So that's what that's where you need to uh, look at. Mm, okay. The next question is from uh, uh, Hien Shen. What happens mm. when the SSF contract expires? Can I convert it to actual shares? Cannot. It is cash settled, just like our FKLI. Mm. If, Meaning uh, that they just I pay only... you the difference. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You only be paid. The... It's cash settled. Huh? Yeah, cash settled. This question is from Hubert. If I already have a future trading account, do I still need to open another one to trade SSF? No need. You just contact your broker. If you cannot view the SSF yet in your platform, just contact your broker. Sometimes because like they, for some reason, they don't display to all clients. Okay. So you just have to contact your broker. Okay. This question is from uh, Rosman. If, mm. uh, if you want to trade SSF, SSF, do we refer to the mother share chart or we follow the SSF chart? Because right now the liquidity, the volume is not in the SSF. Okay, so whenever you're to make decisions, please use back the mother shares because the movement, the underlying is the mother share. So right now, if you look at the SSF charts, you is not enough information for you to do any kind of uh, technical analysis. Mm. Okay. Uh, let me find the next questions. Then, is SSF trading price the same with the mother share in the market? Not exactly the same. It is just like the FKLI is not exactly the same price as our FBM KLC. There will be some differences, okay, but the direction is overall the same. Mm, okay. Can you elaborate more on the difference between stop? and stop limit order okay this, is this one is bad can i move this one is uh, let me can everyone still see my slide yes right okay so this is uh stop and stop limit okay so let me just uh explain these two okay so for stop okay you just have to think at think stop is a conditional order meaning that the stop price or the trigger price. Some platform will ask you to key in the stop price. Some platform will ask you to key in the trigger price. So they are exactly the same thing. It means that before that price is being hit, your, um, your what we call, your order will remain dormant. Okay, will remain dormant. So, um, the difference between stop, okay, stop and stop limit is for stop order, once the stop price is being triggered, it will convert into a market order. Okay, so stop limit, when the stop price is hit, it will convert into a limit order. So let me see if I can... Have a whiteboard. Okay. We still have time, right? Okay. So let's let's give you a scenario. So for example, right now the price goes like this and go up. Let's say here is a trigger price of one six zero zero. Okay. So if you if you Put an order, a stop order. This one is stop order of one six zero zero to buy. Let's say, for some reason, the market jump very fast or the market gap up. Let's say, for example, you key in your order when the market is closed. Let's say, the market opens at one six one zero. It gap up. 
this trigger price of 1600 has been triggered because it go past it. And then once it is triggered, meaning that your order is no longer dormant. Okay, it's no longer dormant. So, and then stop order will convert into a market order. Again, market order is guaranteed execution, but price is not guaranteed. So if you use a normal stop order, it will match at 1610. Once the stop price is triggered, it will convert to a market order and it will match at whatever price it is. Okay. So if you use a stop limit order, same scenario and the stop price is 1600, let's say, okay, here is your order. Uh, uh, here is a stop price. Let's say you, you enter slightly below it. I mean, uh, you key in your order below 1600 and you key, put a stop price of 1600, but you also will key a limit of maybe 1602. So if the market were to get up at, to 1610, yes, your stop will be triggered, but it will convert into a limit order of 1602, meaning that when the market gap straight away to 1610, it is triggered, but it becomes, it converts the order, instead of market order, it converts into a limit order of 1602, which means it is, you won't be buying, okay? Your order won't be matched at above 1602. That's the difference, okay? So if you can, if you can, okay, uh, use stop limit order to buy, okay? If not, if the market suddenly move very fast, there's not enough order to like, it's like, especially why if you may, maybe you trade a breakout and things of things like that, or when the, 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 the asset you trade actually get up. If you use a stop order, you might match at a crazily high price. Okay. If there is a gap happen. So stop limit order for me is a better one because you have a limit to protect you from buying at a crazily high price. Okay. So these are the main differences. Okay. Between stop and stop limit. Okay. Hope that yeah, explains. Okay. It's actually very simple. Stop converts into market order and stop limit converts into a limit order once it is being triggered. Okay. Uh, th th there's another question from uh, Queen Ngo, if I pronounce your name correctly. If I long Gunting 1000, does it mean that I have to pay up 300, 350 ringgit upfront? And do I need to specify the date then I wish to sell or is it open dated? Any stamp duty and clearing fee? Oh, so these are the long questions. Stamp duty, clearing fee, refer to your broker. Okay. <laughs> there is an offer when it comes to this, okay, because right now they are pushing this product. Okay, so, um, okay, let me, what's the first part of the question again? If I long oh, okay. 1,000, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, in futures, okay, when you, let's say you long one contract, you have to, long the right months that you want. For example, if you go long, you have to choose right now. Okay. You want to long the September 2020 or the October 2020 or the December 2020 or the March 2021. Okay. This is the first thing you have to buy. You have to trade the right month for you. Okay. You have to trade the right month for you. Okay. So for example, for some reason you choose to go long on Gunting uh, SSF, September 2020. So meaning that before the contract expires, you can sell. You can queue sell and uh, and and just you have the rights to sell because it has not expired. Okay, so you don't have to specify per se. You don't have to specify when you want to sell it, but make sure you just want to choose the right contract month because once the uh, contract is expired, it will be cash settled. Okay. Mm. Yep. Okay. And uh, for the 350, I did not answer. Yeah, there's a 350 one, right? Yeah, the margin. For futures, yeah. yeah, that is the required margin. Means you need 350 ringgit in your account to maintain this position. 
Okay, so usually for futures, like for example, F, like FCPO, we need 5,000 to establish one contract. So if by the end of today, FCPO goes down, okay, then my account worth will be less than 5,000. So I'll get margin costs. I need to top up. Okay, so for futures, the concept of margin is how much money you need in your account, okay, to establish this contract. Okay, and the movement is marked to the market. Okay, so yes, for Gunting, for example, is it 350? I assume that it's 350. Okay, so if it is 350, you need a minimum of 350 ringgit plus brokerage, okay, to establish this con this contract, okay, this position. So if the price go up, you don't have to top up anything. But if the price goes down, and you, meaning that it go against you, okay, you still want to maintain this position, then you will need to top up and your broker will like inform you that there's a margin call because the margin is not enough hmm. okay what are the risks that investors should be aware of when it comes to trading ssf uh, this is by uh, xin chong okay risk for futures is definitely first one is uh of course you have to think about expiry okay and also there is a leverage because okay because uh, for example if you put like 1000 bucks okay to 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 trade hata okay to trade hata let's say you you are in the wrong side meaning that hata is going down but you go long on the ssf so for whatever reason the, it is going against you okay every day let's say you put 1,000 ringgit, exactly the margin, okay? There's no extra cushion. So let's say today, if Hatta goes down, but you go long, you will lose money, okay? So for example, maybe you will lose the value, the contract value dropped by 100. So your broker will call you up and ask you to top up. This is what I call margin call. So it is very dangerous, okay? if you take the wrong side and then you did not execute any kind of a stop loss to limit the loss okay so this is again we have a leverage uh roi when just now i show you the pnl okay the roi is leverage but you also have to think about the downside it works both way okay so if a position go against you okay uh there's a risk that you will lose more than, let's say, you establish a Gunting contract for 350. There's a risk that you will lose more than 350 because the broker will ask you keep, to keep topping up, topping up because you've got margin call, not enough margin. So that is, I would say that is the greatest risk when it comes to trading, uh, not only SSF, but futures in general. Okay. Okay. So the next question is, is SSF similar to FKLI futures? This is by Janessa. Okay, it's, it's different. Okay, so FKLI, it tracks the movement of FBM KLCI. And SSF is designed to track the movement of the specific shares. Okay, so FKLI can be going up. Okay, so you go long on FKLI, it, you might make money, but if Gunting is going down, if you go long on Gunting SSF, you will definitely be losing money. So it's totally different thing. Okay, so FKLI, the direction is depends by the uh, is determined by the direction of the FK, FBM KLCI, our composite index, whereas SSF direction is on individual shares. So market can be going down, but some shares can be going up. Okay, so it's totally different, uh, different thing. Mm, okay, so let's look at the next question. Can you explain about market maker? What are market makers? Okay, so this is by Murali Haran, if I pronounce his name correctly. Okay, market maker is okay, there are a few types, but let me share with you the market makers that we always see let's say in warrants okay in warrants so market maker their job okay their job is to make sure the derivatives in this case the ssf it could be warrants as well 
okay, the direction, okay, the direction of the uh, the derivatives is going according, okay, to the underlying, meaning that when the underlying is going up, the, sh the price they are moving up as well. Okay, they have to adjust the price so that they go up even though there is no one trading it. Okay, that is their job. It is just like some when if you are familiar with trading like structured warrants, okay, some structured warrants there's not much volume, but when the underlying go up, the core warrant will go up in, in queues as well. The price will go up, although there is like no one actually buying or selling it. So this is the job of market makers so that they, they are uh they reflect the actual value okay of the derivatives okay so this is what we call uh the job for for market maker okay they have to ensure that the derivatives meaning that the son okay is following the mother okay so this is uh the simplest explanation okay i can give you mm. right. okay uh... Can you talk about the concept of margin? Uh, if my loss exceeds the margin amount, so this is by move. Okay, concept of margin. So let's don't use uh, let's don't use SSF because it will deal with a lot of uh, decimals. Let me just use like uh, maybe other product. Okay, mm -hmm. concept of margin. Okay, let me do a white screen. Now, for example, you are trading. A product let's say uh, let's say a uh, cpo let's say the required margin is five thousand assuming there's no brokerage fee uh. so you have exactly five thousand okay in your account and you're able to establish okay this position so by the end of the day okay by the end of the day let's say you go long Okay, you go long and by the end of the day, FCPO go up by, let's say, two points. Okay, so your account value would be 5050 zero, zero, because one point of FCPO is 25 bucks. So two points is 50 bucks. Okay, so there is no issue for you to continue holding this position. But however, if it, you the required margin to stay open in the position is 5,000 and 5,000 is exactly the amount you put in. You go long. Okay. And then FCPO is going, let's say in this case, is going down by two points. By the end of the day, your account value, sorry, your account value would be 4,950. Okay. Because it drops by two points and you go long, you lose 50 bucks. And the thing is, the required margin is 5,000. So your broker will call you up, hey, Mr. So-and-so, the required margin is 5,000. So if you want to still maintain this position as an open position, you would need to top up until your account has 5,000 ringgit. Okay, so this is what we call a margin cost. So that's why you have to top up. So again, futures is marked to the market every single day. So for example, today it dropped two points. Okay. It go against you, meaning that it go against you by two points, you top up 50 bucks. Tomorrow, if it go against you again, you will get another margin call. The next day, if it go against you again, you will get another margin call. So if you always put exactly the required amount, let's say if it requires 5,000, you put exactly 5,000, then if it go against you by one point, you will get margin call already. Okay, so this is the, the concept of uh, margin. Okay, it means that how much money you need, how much value money, okay, trust balance you need in your account in order to maintain whatever position you are taking as still as open, meaning that you still want to maintain a position, you don't want to close it. Okay, so this is the concept of margin in futures market. Okay. So is a uh, SSF one bit equal to 0 0.02? Can I explain about that? This by yes. Kaiser. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the contract specification. Okay. Contract specification, the minimum price fluctuation is 0 
point. Okay, so you won't get price like 19.89, okay, because it's, it will be in multiple of uh, two points, a 0 0.02 point, okay? So yes, minimum 0 0.02 movement. So if you actually convert uh, this 0 0.02 point uh, times 1,000 unit, uh, that's how you get the 20 bucks. Mm, okay. Can we trade SSF strategy like SCPO, like putting trailing stop? This by HS Cheng. Okay, so for right now, uh, for right now, uh, SSF, the volatility, the volume is not like FCPO. So I'm not sure if you even have the chance to trail it up. Okay, for right now, SSF is just like you think that it will go up or go down in the next few weeks or months, you want to speculate that movement. Okay, I don't think that, yes, you can trail, okay, but you have to come to a point and make the decision, I want to sell it, I want to close the position, okay? So um, futures is a little bit different, uh, SSF is a little bit different, and FK, FCPO because you have much more movement, okay, to talk about uh, trailing stop and things of that nature, okay? So of course you are trading the underlying shares, you can use trailing stop and, and things like that. Can I trade SSF as a hedge to the mother share which I'm holding? If, for example, if I hold Genting mother share, I short FS, SSF Genting, this by Janessa. Yes, you see from the slide just now, okay, let's say you are a long-term investor in a company, okay, for example, invest in Hata, but right now, maybe in the short to medium term, Hata might go down in share price. So SSF could be one of the solution for you to hedge again this risk because you you can go short okay you can go short and then the mother shares will lose money because it is going down okay the value will shrink but you will get compensated theoretically okay you will get compensated by shorting uh the uh ssf okay this is how hedging works uh by nature, okay, it's like those fund managers, okay, they might be, okay, holding a lot of uh, index components in their portfolio, the stocks, and if there is one correction that comes, okay, they might want to hedge it by shorting some of the futures. Okay, so this is just uh, the common ways of uh, hedging. But of course, uh, the quantity you have to, it much depends, okay. So if you make sure you hedge the right quantity that you want to hedge, okay. So don't forget that one contract of, of SSF equals to one thousand shares. That's the thing that you yeah. have you have to keep keep in mind, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so mm. if you if you buy one lot, that means only one hundred shares. Then you you buy one contract, then or you, sh you short one contract, then it will be, you may be over hedged, huh? <laughs> Because no, quantity is, is is not is not right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think that concludes our Q and A. So uh, let me mm. just uh, just give me a minute. Uh, quickly go to my slide to tell you to what is the, the presenting. Yeah, precisely. Thank you so much for your uh, sharing today. So let me just uh, no make myself a presenter. All right, so our next webinar is also on uh, SSF, but it's in Malay. So if you today you still feel that uh, you are not very familiar with SSF, you can also still join our next session, which is Pengenalan uh, dan Strategy Bagi Dagangan Single Stock Futures, which is happening next. Uh, next, give me a minute. Huh? Next uh, Thursday, 10th of September. So the registration link is here. I will, uh, you can uh, register. Uh, in our session later, so I will I can share with you the link in a short while. So just give me a minute. So I put in the link in the in the uh, chat box, so you can register yourself for the next session here. In the chat box, if you want to you know deepen your understanding of SSF, uh, in the Basam Layu sessions. All right, happening next uh, Thursday. So uh, before you leave, I have a good news for you, which is uh, we are launching a post webinar survey. So 
uh, all the time we have survey, but this time because we want to get more of you to give us feedback. So if you are to give us feedback in this uh, survey form, we will, are going to pick six lucky respondents uh, to give you with a touch and go e-wallet reload pin worth 50 ringgit. Okay, so uh, if you answer our survey, uh, which we will pick randomly pick six percent to receive a 50 ringgit uh, touch and go e-wallet reload pin so the survey will be launched after this webinar and will also be sent to you via email so after you exit this webinar you'll be able to see the survey if you don't then uh, you also if you miss it then you will also receive it via email uh, when we send it to you okay the lucky winners will be reached out to you within a week if uh, if you are selected all right so so that's the good news so when you join webinar you can still walk away with 50 ringgit huh? so not only this webinar is free but we also give away some cash <laughs> to <laughs> to uh, get you participate uh, it be, be, to make it more engaging all right uh, uh last but not least uh, this is uh, this webinar is brought to you by Bursa Malaysia derivative managed by live chair so we want to thank all of you here for tuning in to this webinar to learn what is single stock futures i hope that today you walk away with a uh, good enough understanding about single stock futures so with that, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for your uh, spending your evening with us. Thank you, uh, Jin Hao, for sharing your idea about SSF single stock futures. With that, see you all next week. Bye bye.